This is how to replace your iPhone 5S home button flex cable. You should know ahead of time this will not restore the fingerprint functionality to your home button. When Apple started bringing phones with aftermarket home buttons, I decided to scrap this tutorial since I thought it would have caused more harm than good. Since then, they've come to their senses and fixed the problem that was causing error 53 if you performed an upgrade or restore after replacing your home button. So some of you might find this helpful after all. This will fix your home button, but you will not be able to use the Touch ID feature. Only Apple can issue and match a working fingerprint scanner for your device. Um, tools that I recommend for this are going to be your pentalobe driver to open up the phone. We will need a small Phillips like a PH000 once we get inside. It's good to have a pair of electrostatic tweezers on hand. A uh, plastic stick spudger comes in handy. And then also a thin pry tool like uh, something like a 0.73 millimeter guitar pick will work. And a straight uh, razor blade like this and again I always take the edge off of these so this really isn't a sharp razor blade but it is very thin. Um, now when it comes to opening up the phone we will have our two pentalobe screws on the bottom right next to the lightning uh, lightning connector so you'll have to start by removing these first. And once you have those set aside I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit here so you can get a better view. Now there are a few different ways that you can open up the iPhone 5, 5S, and 5C. I've used everything uh, from a suction cup to the iSesimo tool, a little flat um, piece of sheet metal here. But I have to say that overall, uh, we have a couple of problems with those. Uh, one, of, one of the things is that with this particular tool, it is possible to end up scarring the inside of the frame here, so I don't really like using that. As far as the suction cup, they can work, but not particularly well because this has a very tight fit and it doesn't always open properly. So overall, what I found to be the easiest thing to use is a very thin blade like this, again, with no edge. And if you go in here at the bottom, just between the plastic and the metal frame. Remember, you do not want to get between the glass and the plastic. There's a thin layer here that goes between the outer edge. And what you can do is just kind of push this in just about that far. It's not very far, and it'll give you a very even pry when you start to lift it up. Just bring it straight back. And from there, you can see we've cracked it open, and it might take a couple of tries because it does want to fall back inside. But once you have uh, propped it open a bit, you want to switch over to something soft like your guitar pick and from here we're just going to run part ways up the sides you don't need to go all the way to the top just about three quarters of the way on each side and that's going to release the display assembly from the housing and you don't want to come out real fast just yet because remember we have a cable underneath the home button now I like to take something here and just set it next to the phone that way when we lift this up we're going to prop it up we don't want it to be falling over we'll get to that in just a second uh, more importantly there are three little tabs here at the top of the phone that you have to dis disengage from underneath the housing. So after you lift this up just a little bit, you wanna work it down just a hair, probably about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch or so, and that will release the top end. Now from here, remember, we still have that cable. So if you just bring this up and move it over slightly, it will expose, expose a retaining clip here. Now this thing is a little bit tricky because what we're going to do is we're actually going to pry underneath this clip, but it has a tendency to go flying across the room. So you'll probably want to kind of shield this as you pull it out. Um, that way you don't lose it because, and it's going to be hard to see. I'm going to leave it open so you can kind of see. It will just kind of pop off there. And then if you've got your electrostatic tweezers handy, you can just go ahead and grab a hold of that and set it aside for now. It's going to have uh, two little slots on what would be towards the top of the phone and then it's got a tab that actually locks into place over the flex cable which you can see came disconnected just now so this cable actually plugs into this pop connector but we'll see that shortly as i'm going to replace the entire thing so what i like to do here is just have something where we can kind of lift this up and make sure it clears the camera because it has a tendency to get stuck right there and we want to just lean the entire display up this direction but we don't want it to be hanging all the way over. Otherwise, you're going to put tension on these cables in the inside. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the entire display assembly. It is possible to do this repair without removing it from the phone, but the safest thing to do is to go ahead and disconnect the battery, remove the display assembly fully, and then that way you can kind of get a better look at what we're doing here. I'll leave that up to you. But for now, what we're going to do is take out these two screws, remove this retaining panel, 
and then we want to disconnect our battery cable from this side that way we don't have any juice running to the phone when we just uh, disconnect the display assembly so we're gonna have one two three four screws that are gonna be removed this one in particular has a tendency to not always stick to a magnetized driver so if it doesn't you may have to go inside with a pair of tweezers and fish it out that's typically the case you can just go in here and grab a hold of this and be very careful of course we don't want to lose that in the meantime we'll have three more to take out and then this little plate on top you can actually just very carefully grab a hold of and move that to the side and here we're going to have three additional flip pop connectors uh, one here that will lift out another one just beneath it running the other direction and then we have one final one that was kind of hidden back here and disconnect that and we can pull it completely out from the housing now at the bottom of the display assembly we'll have our home button and the first thing you'll notice is we have a screw here that's going to have to be disengaged i'm not going to say remove because once you loosen it up it doesn't technically come all the way out of the phone you see there's a little um, metal piece here at the top that's going to be pointed up towards the screen and after we back that out a little bit we should be able to just kind of bend this whole thing back it doesn't look like i got it all the way just yet and that thing likes to spin around the whole time and we can kind of just fold this down again you'll see the screw actually stays in place where it's at uh, which is interesting because our replacement part doesn't seem to be able to accommodate this. Now underneath we're going to have two more screws in this little plate at the bottom that we can remove and set aside. And that will release this retaining plate on the back. So again, very carefully, we're going to just kind of lift this out for the moment. And you'll see that inside we have our entire um, home button flex cable. And on this replacement part, you have to be really careful getting these out. Because they like to stick to the inside of the package. I'm just going to go ahead and tear the package open. Very carefully, it's better to tear this plastic than the part. So it does have some adhesive on the back that's kind of making it stick inside. Right, it's really stuck on here. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Make it stick to the package. In any case, so you can see this is kind of gonna sit right here, but it does not have um, this little screw. Actually, and what we're gonna do is take our heat gun because we will have adhesive behind this area and around the perimeter of the home button. And what we wanna do is try to remove that original adhesive, adhesive with the home button. So you definitely wanna heat this up. It's not fun to try to replace this adhesive when it gets damaged. So get that nice and warm, not too hot of course. And then we're gonna go underneath the flex cable so that we can release it from the panel. And then I'm also gonna push on the home button from the front side until it comes out like so and there we have the original and as you can see the slight difference here is that there is not a part to accommodate this screw also the rubber gasket that's on here will have to be transferred to the new part because since it wraps around the back we're going to have to release it from the home button. And again, we want to try to retain this original adhesive when we do this. And we'll have to kind of just thread this around the old cable, like so. And then we'll transfer it over to the new part the same way, just like this. And then, of course, the fun part is going to be getting it around the button, kind of move the flex cable out of the way. If you can see what I'm aiming for, it is to get this back into the original position. Feel free to skip forward if you don't want to watch this part, because it may take a second.
Okay, so I think we're just about where we want to be with this. And we can go ahead and set the button inside the housing. And again, very unusual, but we don't have that little screw or any place to put it. So I believe this may be some sort of uh, grounding mechanism. I'm not sure, but there's literally nowhere in the new cable to install it. So what we could do is take this screw out completely and put it back into the frame. But for now, I'm going to install this and make sure that the button is actually going to work before we go that far. Now, so before we fold this flex cable over with the adhesive, we want to make sure that we install the retaining panel for the home button. And that will keep the button from falling off inside the phone, among other things. Right, so now we can kind of fold this over and we'll want to confirm that the button is clicking, of course, before we go any further. And now we can go ahead and get this back inside of the housing. All right, so these cables you have to be very careful with. It can be tricky to get them into the right position. Don't force it. You may have to feel your way around a bit and you'll see that they don't always line up exactly where you want them to be so you have to kind of maneuver them into the right position this last one tends to be a little tricky sometimes just be patient and there is one spot where it will click into place not always easy to find And it usually goes a little further that direction than I think would be intuitive. If that, if that helps at all, you'll see that these pads almost butt up against each other here. So usually I'm aiming too far this way and I have to kind of move it back towards the top of the display to get it into the right position. Again, make sure these are all seated properly and remain that way until you've got this panel installed. Otherwise, you're going to end up with lines on your screen. Or you can have all kinds of other funny problems. So these things have to be precisely seated the way they were when you took it off. And of course, this is when you wish you had three hands. And I would start with the screws that will actually stick to the driver, although I had that in the wrong spot there for a moment. And then remember, we do have this one last screw that you will probably have to sit in place using your tweezers because getting it to stick to the driver is usually not going to be possible. Just, just set it in there and then we can tighten it down. All right, so now we can go ahead and reconnect the battery cable. And we'll put this panel back inside. And the next thing we want to do is go ahead and plug this flex cable here into the bottom. Do make sure that your cable looks like this. It's going to go this direction, back here, over here, and this way again. So you're going to end up with kind of like an M if you're looking at it from here. And that will give you the correct orientation inside of the phone. Next thing we want to do is plug in the cable. And I'm going to try to get this to where you can see it. Uh, right down here at the bottom. This will snap into place. And when it does... Make sure that's seated properly. Two tabs on this side are going to tuck in first, right on top of the uh, pop connector. And then this little tab at the right hand side will lock it into place. Again, you may have to manipulate that a bit. Once you push it down, it'll snap right in, and that's going to keep your pop connector from unconnecting or disconnecting. We'll tuck this in at the top very carefully. Work your way down the sides. This should not require a lot of force. 
go ahead and power it up and confirm that the home button is working. All right, so there you have it. If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews, and most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section, and thanks for watching.